Uh, I've been working in this uh, building here downtown, this big white building, for the last uh, oh, eight, nine years or so. And uh, I'm a member of the White House Press Corps, one of those uh, pesky people that uh, some people don't like. Please don't hold that uh, against me. And I track what the president uh, does uh, every day. But uh, beyond that, I spend a lot of time writing and speaking and tweeting about the other 43 presidents as well, and with a particular focus on presidential leadership, which I think is very important, particularly because there are lessons that the rest of us can learn from them. And thus, without a great deal of thought, this talk is called Leadership Lessons of the President. What else are you gonna call it? Now, when you think about it, the presidents are actually, people sometimes get the wrong idea, presidents actually have much less power than people think. They have tons of opponents, tons of limitations. They're usually despised by half the country. Everything they do is nitpicked and second-guessed by the country. In fact, people all over the world do it. And yet, despite that, the best president somehow managed to overcome these limitations, work around them, and really become great leaders. Why? How do they do it? Why is it that some are better than others? And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. Now, there's not enough time to talk about all the presidents. I mean, let's be honest. So I'm going to talk about the top uh, five here. Uh, they really need no introduction. Here they are, five, Teddy Roosevelt, four, Jefferson, three, Washington, two, Franklin Roosevelt. Two Roosevelts in the top five, very interesting. And at the top, uh, Mr. Lincoln, who, by the way, is staying on the $5 bill. Some other people are going, but Lincoln is uh, staying. This is not necessarily my opinion, by the way. It's really the aggregation of a bunch of surveys of political scientists and professors and uh, those kind of folks. And for purposes of this discussion, what I've done is I've actually picked one quote of each of these five men that I think is interesting. And it's not necessarily the most uh, famous quote of these five presidents, but it's one that I think is really reflective of what made them great. And from a business standpoint, I think there are lessons that we can learn uh, from them. So Theodore Roosevelt, again, this is a very unknown quote of his, but it's a quite revealing. Uh, the Great Bull Moose said, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think what Roosevelt meant by that was, I'm sure we all know somebody in our office who thinks he, he's a know-it-all and is uh, quick to uh, correct you if you're wrong and that kind of thing. People like that tend not to rise too far up the ladder. It's uh, not the most admirable trait. Roosevelt understood this. Now, he, he, he did a lot of talking himself, but he understood that we have two ears and one mouth, which means that theoretically we should listen twice as much as we speak. He didn't always quite stick to that, but nevertheless, he was enough of a leader to understand that it's very important to listen to people understand their problems, know where they're coming from. That is what made Theodore Roosevelt uh, a great leader. Empathy is a very important leadership characteristic. Some people have it, some people don't. And this is one of the many things that made uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, great. Again, I'm just picking one kind of fairly obscure quote here that uh, highlights who these men were. So genuine empathy for others, that is leadership. Okay. Next is Thomas Jefferson, again, kind of an unknown quote, on matters of style, swim with the current, on matters of principle, stand like a rock. Now, what Jefferson meant by that was it's always important for politicians to understand what the voters think and what the electorate thinks, and corporate executives, business leaders also have a need to understand what People in the marketplace are thinking about ideas and products, and it's perfectly okay to be flexible and to change and to compromise when needed. Jefferson understood that, but when it comes to matters of uh, principle, things like ethics and integrity, Jefferson would not change a bit. I mean, how many times have we seen 
people in the business world where politicians sell out for a quick buck or a deal or something like that. And then we wonder why there's so little trust in politicians today and so little trust in corporate America. It's because of behavior like this. So Jefferson thought, very important on matters of principle, stand like a rock. It's okay to compromise on some things, but adhering to principle, that is leadership. Who's next? George Washington. He's staying on the currency too, by the way. Associate yourself with men of good quality if you esteem your own reputation, for it is better to be alone than in bad company. Uh, George Washington, of course, was a man of towering integrity, uh, moral rectitude, all of that. And he did not surround himself with some leaders, some politicians, and some corporate executives. Refused to surround himself with the suck-ups and yes-men and people who simply told him what he wanted to hear. Uh, that is not what good leaders do. Uh, Washington was secure enough in who he was, confident enough in who he was, that he could bring men into his own government who in some cases were much smarter than he was. In his first cabinet, Washington had a Thomas Jefferson, who uh, I think most people recognize was uh, probably the most intellectual president, perhaps. Uh, we had Alexander Hamilton, perhaps, was smarter than Washington as well. He was confident enough to surround himself with men like that and work with him. A lot of folks today don't have the confidence to do that. So that is what made Washington, one of the many things that made Washington a leader. Get the best people you can find, even if they're smarter than you, even if they challenge you from time to time, that is leadership. Okay, who's next? Franklin Roosevelt, again, kind of an unknown quote, but I think very revealing in terms of who Franklin Roosevelt was. Men are not prisoners of fate, but prisoners of their own minds. Think about that for a second. And what Roosevelt meant was, you can't live in the past. You can't dwell on past mistakes. We all do that. We've all made mistakes in our personal life, our business life, and so forth. Uh, Roosevelt certainly did. But he realized at some point you've got to move on. Uh, you can't control what's in the rearview mirror. You do have enormous power, though, to control your today, and you have enormous power to shape tomorrow, but stop living in the past and stop dwelling on stuff that's gone wrong. That's what Roosevelt did. And when you think about the things that Franklin Roosevelt went through, he dealt with the biggest economic crisis this country has ever had. He dealt with Hitler. He dealt with the Japanese. He dealt with Mussolini. He couldn't even walk. He had polio and was confined to a wheelchair for much of his adult life. And look at, yet look at this picture of him. One of the most famous pictures of Roosevelt. It looks like he doesn't have a worry in the world. He has the cigarette at the jaunty, confident uh, angle. That is the image that he projected to America and the world. And the leadership lesson here is confidence is contagious. Confidence is leadership. Business leaders, be them politicians, or in the corporate world, you have got to project that. It is really infectious in a very positive way. And that's why one of the many reasons why uh, Roosevelt is number two. So here we are at uh, the top. Now, again, kind of a, a not particularly well-known uh, quote, but I think very revealing for Lincoln. Do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Think about that. Do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Now, what Lincoln meant by that was uh, all politicians have uh, enemies. Lincoln certainly did. Politicians today try and destroy each other. They try and humiliate each other. Lincoln actually had a different idea. He said, I'm going to actually try and get along with people that I might not necessarily like, that I might disagree with, because I can probably learn something uh, from them. He talked to them. He sought their advice. He even invited a couple of them into their cabinet, into his cabinet. They worked together and they took on the greatest crisis, obviously, this country has ever had. 
the Civil War. It's too bad that politicians today don't uh, have that, uh, that kind of attitude. It's the destructive personal politics that we have today, I think, would not sit well with Lincoln. I think this is a very powerful quote. Do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Working closely with rivals, that is leadership. If you read the uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin book about this, I think you'll learn more about that, but absolutely true. Uh, work closely with the anybody, talk to everybody, uh, try and be friends with as many people as you can. It's hard to do, and you have to have the confidence to do it, but if you can, be it in politics or in the business world, these are the things that really can make someone a great leader. So, just to recap here, these are the basic lessons of the presidents. Show empathy. Be principled. Know and do what's right. Project optimism and confidence. Work with everyone, even your rivals. These are lessons that are easily applicable in the business world as well. I mean, I know all kinds of people who go to business school and they learn how to read financial statements and uh, and uh, balance sheets and, and these kind of things. That's all well and good, but I think the best business leaders I know are actually folks who practice some of these very basic skills here. These guys tried to keep it simple with adhering to this basic code of conduct, knowing what's right, doing what's right, showing honesty, integrity, and principle at all times and not compromising on those bedrock issues. So thank you very much. Thank you.